Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Just turn to your neighbor and do this. <laughs> amen, amen. It's great to see all of us. We can have our seats. Thank you so much, worship team. We bless God because he is a good God. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Today is the 24th of January, and the Lord has been good. And I can testify of that by looking at you. In as much as I'm seeing the eyes, the eyes can show that God has been good to us. And so we bless God this morning. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Almighty God for this great opportunity that he's given me to share the word of the Lord, his word. And I also want to thank God for our bishop and our mom because of trusting us with this pulpit from time to time. May the Lord bless you so, so much. Hallelujah. Buonas, if you will. This year we are mounting. We are mounting up. And none of us is being left behind. Hallelujah. We are mounting up. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 31 that we shall be saved together with our households. As for me and my house, Joshua said, we will serve the Lord. And today I'd like to bring it to us that as for me and my house, we are mounting up. I'll repeat that. As for me and my house, we are mounting up. I don't know about you. I don't know who you are willing to leave behind. For me, nobody is being left behind. And I keep saying, whether they like it or not, we are mounting up. Born as if you were. We are mounting up. And we bless God. Today, even as I've been thinking about us mounting up, something has been coming on and on and on in my heart. And I just want to share with you uh, what has been like a rema word in my spirit for a period of time now. That as we mount up with wings, we can also dig wells. Hallelujah. We can also dig wells as we mount up. And I couldn't help but remember, I think it was in either 2008, from the month of January into February, or 2009, the year gets lost a bit, but I think it was around those two years, when our bishop taught us a series about digging wells. And one well that he taught us that has never left my mind is digging the well of divine healing. One as if you will. How many of us were there when we were being taught digging wells? Aha. Uh -huh. Digging the well of divine healing. And there were several wells that were dug even as our bishop taught us in this place. And as the wells were dug, there were people who were trusting God for children. For several years, at least I know one. For several years they had been married. Ten years. But as the well of divine healing was dug in this place, by the end of that year, the firstborn was born. Born as if you were. And so I couldn't help but remember that even as the Lord kept speaking to me about digging wells. And wells in the olden days were very, very important, especially in the land of Israel because it's a desert. Israel is a desert. And so anyone who had a well would always end up being very wealthy, very wealthy. And these wells that I'm talking about were the wells that Abraham dug when he lived in an area that was called Gerar. He had lived in Egypt during a famine, and while in Egypt there is a technology he learned. In other words, technology did not just appear in the, tw in, in the 21st century. There was a technology he learned, and that technology was one of irrigation. The Egyptians had food security because they used to irrigate their land using the river Nile. But now he has moved from Egypt. And by that time when he was still there, he learned so much that I believe he passed on to his son Isaac. Now when he moved from Egypt and he's come and settled in a place called Gerar, there is no river, a Nile that he can use to irrigate so that he can have food security. And it's at that point that he decided, I am going to dig wells so that my family 
will be able to have food security. And he dug several wells around the area of Gerar. And I'd like us to read the, bo- uh, the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 26, verse 18. Genesis 26, verse 18. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father, Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died. Underline the word, after Abraham died. And he gave them the same names his father had given them. That's also a point you need to underline. This means that when Isaac got into this place, he realized he also needed food security. And he gave the wells that he dug the very names that his father had given those wells. Now, to dig a well during those days was not very, very easy because they did not also have the drills that we have currently when we are saying we are going to sink a borehole or we are going to drill a well. They did not have those kind of machinery that we are having today. But they had to go and the ground was literally hard, very hard because it's a desert area. And they had to do it manually, meaning it must have been taking a long while before they could hit the water table. It was a hard thing to do. Now, what's a well? A well is a wall that is normal, a, a, a hole that is normally dug on the ground. And it, depending on where you're coming from, you might even dig about 50 feet or 30 before you reach the water table. And when you get to that water table, then you can be able to draw it for household use, for irrigation, or for whatever it is that you want to use it for. And so Isaac, uh, the, the father Abraham has already died. And Isaac now is living in the land of Gerar, Uh, And by the time he was getting to Gera, there was a famine that had hit the land. So he was en route to Egypt, going to look for a way and a means of sustaining his family. But as he got to Gerar, the Lord appeared to him in Genesis chapter 26 from verse 2 there. The Lord appears to him and tells him, do not go to Egypt. Stay right here where you are and I will bless you. Do not go to Egypt. Maybe those days, Egypt used to appear like the America of today. Where people imagine that that is where we have have the greener pastures. So every one of us, when we hear somebody is going to the U.S., what comes into our minds is that the Lord must have blessed this person. This person looks very, very blessed. And so I want to believe that in those days, if someone would have left the land where King Isaac were living and was able to move into Egypt, maybe the people of old used to say, this person has been blessed. Because Egypt had food. It never lacked anything. Egypt had technology. When you talk about the first civilization, it began in Egypt. So it was almost an equivalent of the US for the Kenyan or the UK for the Kenyan. But the Lord comes to him and tell him, do not go to that US that you've been thinking about. Stay right here in Kenya and I will bless you. I will bless you. And Abraham, I mean Isaac, obeyed the word of the Lord and he stayed right where the Lord had commanded him to stay. And as he stayed there, I believe God gave him ideas that he was going to put into place so that he could have the food security that he was going to seek for in the land of Egypt. And the Bible says that he dug a well from the scripture that we have just read, that he dug a well. And he dug the wells that his father had dug during the olden days. But the Philistines waited until Abraham had died. Because it's Abraham who used to take care of these wells. It's Abraham who used to walk around and guard the wells. And now the Philistines are looking around and realizing that Abraham has died. Therefore, it is time to put dirt into these wells so that his family may not have any source of pure water. There are wells that were dug by our fathers of faith and our mothers of faith of old. They dug those wells through prayer and fasting and for that reason some of us are seated here 
today, this morning. Because somebody labored in prayer. Somebody labored in fasting. Calling forth his generation. Even those people that they never knew were going to be born. They took time to pray. They took time to intercede. And that's the reason some of us are here this morning. Many times as I walked through that gate... I remember um, many, many years ago, I was not a member in this church. But I think, I don't know whether it was a, a grand opening of this church or what was happening in this church. And so as a, a bunch of youths, I was a young person then, as a bunch of youths, we came all the way from Miss Lee. And I remember the church that we used to have here used to have some paper walls, yellowish. I remember that. And the pulpit was somewhere there. And there was so much light because it was not yet finished. And I remember sitting at a corner, this extreme end, with a bunch of young people that we had come with from Miss Lee. And our main aim was just to come and enjoy the fellowship in this place because we had come for Kesha several times when the church was down there. Bonnes was if you will. Many times as I walk in right now and I see what God has done, I can't help but thank God because there was a man and a woman who dug a well. Bona Sifiri. They dug a well. They might be tired right now because of age, but they dug a well from which we are drinking today. The well through prayer, through traveling in the presence of the Lord. And many times I've also thought about deliverance ministry. And I can't help but think about those men. Many times when we've gone for meetings, we are told about men of God. Some of them who used to pray for seven hours in tongues, nonstop before they came for the service. The likes of Kinajo Kayo. Hallelujah. The likes of Kina Bishop to missing. Bishop JB normally tells us they were young men then. So that must have been many years ago because right now they are grandfathers. Praise the name of the Lord. They dug wells. And today I'd like us to talk about how we are going to dig wells even as we are mounting up. I'd like us to read Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Part A is what I'm interested in. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. I believe when Abraham was digging the wells, he was not only interested in digging a well for himself and Sarah. He must have thought of Isaac and his children. He must have thought of Jacob and his children. He must have thought of generations that were going to come. A people whom he only knew because God had promised him that his descendants were going to be as numerous as the sand. But he never saw them physically. But as he dug those wells, he kept on thinking, I want my descendants to have a place where they'll be able to be drinking pure water. But as soon as he died, the Bible says that the Philistines stepped into the scene and decided they are going to cover this well so that the descendants of Abraham would not have any place to get water from. That is what the enemy has been trying to do. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, as we are talking about digging of the wells, we are not digging for ourselves. I'm not digging for me as Millicent and Pastor Kaunda, but I'm thinking of my son, Keith. I'm thinking of my daughter, Joy. I'm thinking about their children, and I'm thinking about their children's children. And that will cause me to kneel. It will cause me to travel, because I want them one day to believe in this very God I have believed in. Praise the name of the Lord. Digging with generations in mind. That when we are told we are going to get to a place of prayer and fasting, I'm not only going to think of how hungry I am, but I'm going to think of the future that I am investing in. I won't just wait until it has been called for by the church, but I'll make fasting and prayer a lifestyle because I know I am investing for my children's children. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. We are digging wells. Everything that we are doing in this generation, we should have our families in mind and this church in mind. If a few years to come, you walked into this compound, maybe you will be 80 years old, you are having your walking stick, or maybe you'll still be walking straight because there are people who get to 80 and they're still walking straight. Or you'll be 90 years if God graces you and gives you up to 90 years. And by God's grace, you walk into this compound. Will you find young people in this place worshiping God? Will you find young people worshiping God? And I can't help but remember the time when we were having a groundbreaking ceremony for the building of this cathedral. There are few words that were spoken by our dad in this house. And he said, one phrase that has stuck, that this will be a place where young people will find comfort and will come to worship you. Praise the name of the Lord. If I never got many other things, that one thing stuck. Maybe because I have young people in my house, I don't know. But the question is, at that time when you'll be 90 years old, will there be young people in this place praising God and lifting him in the way they should? Some of the wells have that that has been tr thrown into them. The well of worship. The well of worship. We are told that there was a time people used to worship and the presence of God would come and guys would get healed. The well of worship. And you sit back currently in this generation and you're listening to the songs that our young people are composing and you're wondering, will we still have the well of worship having pure water in generations to come? When I saw as a fury. There was one that was playing yesterday. And it said something like, shoot Satan. Pah. I don't know how many people have heard that thing. <laughs> you know? And I sat back and I was wondering, seriously? Is it that easy? Some of them are trying to imagine that you can flash Satan like, I don't want to say. And I started asking my son, if that was to be sung in the pulpit, would you lift your hands and worship God? The well of worship. The well of prayer. When you walk into the presence of the Lord during a prayer meeting, that is the worst attended meeting of all. The well of prayer. Is it that we normally become so busy when it's prayer time? Is it that our bosses normally give us extra work when it's time to come to church to pray? Whereas the other times we can get permission? Hallelujah. The Philistines were willing to ensure they throw that into the wells so that they can dry up the next generation. And the devil today is endeavoring to throw that into the wells that our fathers of faith dug, dug so that they can dry out this generation. They want to dry out your children. They want to dry out our spouses. He is serious about it. A few days ago, we were just talking with the rest of the pastors, and we were saying the children who went home in the month of March when Corona came, and kids were told they are closing school. The ones who came back to school in January of 2021 are not the same children. One has a few. They might be the same physically. But they have changed a lot, even psychologically. Such that when a teacher is standing in front of a classroom now, 
he cannot even pay attention on the blackboard because he doesn't know what is coming from behind. That might not be your son or my son, but it could be your cousin, your cousin, it could be your nephew, it could be your niece. There are those who closed school in March when they were young boys, young men in high school, form three, but they have gone back to school when they are fathers of three and four and five. And believe you me, we cannot close our eyes and say it is well. It is not well. If we close our eyes, it will be said of us like it was said in the book of Judges, chapter 2 and verse 10. There arose a generation who knew neither the Lord or what the Lord had done. That generation might be the generation we are talking about. When we are busy feeling good, they might be getting lost. A few days ago, a teacher came and shared with me. I know I didn't ask for this permission, and the teacher is around here. She walks somewhere, and she finds kids in class too. Girls, very many of them surrounding one of them. And what were they helping the girl? It was during school time. They were helping the girl to change into home clothes, class two. To change into home clothes. And at another corner, there were boys, very many. Same age, class two. Who were helping the young boy to change into home clothes because there is a wedding. So that young man is the groom. And this small little girl is the bride. Those are the things that they have gathered over the nine-month holiday. It's not all lost. And that's why I started by saying, as for me and my house, we are mounting up. Is there a woman in this place, a man in this place, a parent, who is saying, as for me and my house, we are mounting up. Do we have those people in this house? Because if there are, then we are going to get to the place of prayer. Pray until we have pushed our children into the kingdom of God. It's not going to be easy. There are those who are already in drugs. The parents are here today as we are talking. They come, they are smiling, but deep inside they are wounded. They are wondering, my only son, what am I going to do about my only son? He has gotten into drugs. You almost feel like you want to write him off. I had a mother tell me one time that I told my son to pack and leave. Then after they have left, what next? What next? It feels the same way it felt when Lazarus had died and the sisters were so desperate. They did not know exactly what to do. And when Jesus appeared in the scene, Martha is telling Jesus, he has been in the grave four days. In other words, the situation is hopeless. Jesus, you have come when it is very late. We have already buried this person. You should have come when he was unwell. Maybe you would have touched him and made him whole. But now it is too late. He has been in the grave for four days. And she broke down and cried. And Mary comes and breaks down at the feet of Jesus and cries. And maybe there is a parent in this place who is seated and saying, Jesus, it is too late. My son has been in the grave for four days. My daughter has been in the grave for four days. In other words, they have been in this drug abuse for years. Now they are addicted. There is no rehab we have not visited. You are too late. 
But I want to bring it to you that though Lazarus had been in the grave for four days, Jesus still came and called him forth. And this morning as I'm standing here, I want to bring it to you that if your son has been there for more than four days, your daughter has been in those particular things that you don't like for more than four days, if you feel like it is too late, it is time to arise and say, Jesus, I am giving you over this situation because I know you are able. I am digging the well of faith. I am removing the dirt of unbelief and I am trusting in you one more time that you can call my daughter forth from the drugs. You can call my son out of the drugs and I know it shall be well. Because whether they are on drugs or whether they are on whichever else that they are doing, one thing that I know is that in the year 2021, we are mounting up with everything that is ours. Yeah. When I you everything that is ours but it will take you and it will take me it will take you to cry to the Lord and it will take me at times we sit back and we are wondering didn't I take them to Sunday school didn't I pray for them didn't I take them for dedication yes you did but the enemy has decided to throw that because the enemy has decided to throw that, we are going to take a shovel and we will start removing the dirt. We will start removing the dirt deliberately because it's you who knows the pain. I might not know the pain that your children has caused you. You might have come and shared with me, but I want to tell you something, that you who is being pinched by that shoe, when you arise in prayer, you are able to explain it to God better. And so yes, the pastor might be helping you to pray, but it is time to arise and pray for yourself. You have given up because of that spouse. Who has gotten lost because of a strange woman somewhere? He left. He came, packed his clothes. And you know, that only happens in this generation. Because when we were young, we never ever heard that a man walked out of his marriage. I don't know about your place. But where I come from, men never used to walk out of their homes. It's women who used to pack and leave. But in the current dispensation, a man will come, pack his clothes in a paper bag and leave for a strange woman's house. And maybe yours has done that. Maybe yours has done that, leaving you with children and you're feeling like hell has broken loose. You're feeling the responsibilities are too much. It is time to arise and forget about who you are. Because like for instance, when a woman is in labor, they do not care who is around. They don't care who is around. They only concentrate on the pain that they are going through until the baby comes forth. It is time for us who are seated here to arise whether you are a brother, whether you are a woman. And if you are a brother, you may not understand the intensity of labor pain. May you tell the Lord God, teach me what it means to labor in you so that you'll be able to understand how to labor for your children and for your children's children. Praise the name of the Lord. We are not letting them go. We are not letting them go. In my house I have two nations. Two nations that I keep confessing and declaring that greatness is their portion. I don't care what is happening. I didn't care what is happening. And maybe you are looking at me and saying, Pastor, but your children are serving in the Lord. Yes, they are serving in the Lord today. But you do not know what I've been through. You don't know. You don't know the times I have cried because of them. Some because of behavior. Some because of sickness. You do not know. And even right now, I'm not ignorant of the enemy's devices. I keep praying for them on a daily basis. 
And so we will not let them go to the enemy and say he has already had them. No, it is time kupigania. You will hold your child and tell the enemy, you know what? You are not having this one. You will hold on to your husband or to your wife in prayer and say, this one is going nowhere because it is until death do us part. This year, as we mount up, we are mounting up with everything that is ours. We are mounting up in prayer. We are mounting up whether the church has called for a prayer and fasting season or not. I will call it for myself. I will call it for myself. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are digging the well of faith. We are digging the well of worship. We are digging the well of worship. What are we digging? We are telling God, restore your presence, God, during our worship services. Restore your power, God, during our worship services. The Bible says Jesus was speaking to the disciples and he said, when the son of man returns, will he find faith in this world? And what we are saying is, in this season, as we are going to be in the presence of God during worship, sicknesses and diseases have to leave. We cannot walk in the same way and go out the same. Hallelujah. We are refusing. We are refusing. We are also praying that the Holy Ghost will have a free will to move in our congregation and in our lives. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. As the Holy Spirit comes, we are digging the well of witnessing. The well of witnessing. Pastor Kibera normally likes saying that to kidil na mendeza kwako, na neighbor jadil na zake, they'll still find their way into your house. Bona yesu asifiwe. We will witness to our neighbors until they receive the Lord. Kwa sababu watutaki mende zile zinakuwa transferred into our homes. Hallelujah. So we will witness, not because the church has said it's a harvest summit, but because Jesus, we love him so much that we want to share him out there. Hallelujah. We will dig the well of witnessing. And our bishop said a few, months, a few weeks ago that even as we mount up, some of us might not mount up. And as I sat there, I said, I'm not in that list. Of those who will not mount up, I am not in that list. Whatever it takes for us to mount up, I will mount up. I will Mount up with wings like an eagle. I want to come to a conclusion so that we can just have a time of prayer briefly. I don't know what it is that you've been fighting with because I've laid more emphasis about digging the well of faith for our children in our children's children. I don't know what it is that you've been fighting with in your house. And even before I talk to the parents in this place, I know there are young people in this place. Some of us walked into this church because mom pushed us to come or dad pushed us to come. It was not out of a free will. And so we are here. Or some 
came because they want to meet friends today in this church. But as you've been coming on and on, you have never, ever given your life to Jesus Christ. Today is your chance to give the Lord your life. We know there are those who normally walk through that gate and we come and sit here. But when we come out of this place, we still go and buy the crates. When I talk about the crates, the young people understand me. Maybe the older generation may not. Or maybe you're even seated here, but you have one crate in your pocket. That you want to use when you get out. Today you can tell yourself, enough is enough. I am not going to consume this crate today. I am leaving it once and for all. You keep saying you cannot function unless you take it. Yes, you can. Because you are not born taking it. And the Lord who delivers can even deliver you from the withdrawal syndromes. It might not be that great but it might be that one that we normally put at the back of our tongues so that in a melt pole pole makes it, making us feel high. Hallelujah. It might be kuber. Umeibeba kidogo tu kwa mfuko leo. The Lord is saying, I am in need of you. I'm interested in you. I love you and my mercy cannot let you go. It's interesting to note that it's not only young people who use those crates and the kubers and the like. We even have husbands and wives who are using them. Maybe you are here and you're that kind of a person. I want to bring it to you that the Lord loves you so much. All he wants you to do is to lift your hands and say, Lord, save me. I am drowning I am drowning. I am drowning. Talking to those who are born again, it is time to arise and remove the dirt from the wells. The enemy has been enjoying serving our children with muddy water. And you know, muddy water cannot refresh, muddy water has infections. Muddy water is contaminated. It is time for us to refuse so that we can remove all the dirt that has been in that water and start allowing the Holy Spirit to serve our children with pure water, with clean water. If you're there and your prayer is for your child, your prayer is for your daughter, your prayer is for your son. If you rise up on your feet, we will pray for that category first. You might say it's embarrassing. <laughs> it will be more embarrassing when you'll be getting into heaven and they're headed to hell. It will be more painful on that day when the trumpet will sound and you're looking behind and you cannot see your children. If there is such a parent, just rise on your feet as we pray. And begin digging that well. Begin digging that well. If you could just begin praying and digging that well. You know your child's name. Call on them. You know your child's name. Some of them have been lost from home for a long time. Come on, lift your voice. Call your child by name. Like Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. 
The rest of us can help these dear ones. Even as we pray. Refuse with your child. Refuse with them. And tell the devil, you know what? I am mounting up with my child. I am mounting up with my daughter. I don't care how he has been sinking deep into this addiction. I don't care how lost he is. I don't care the pain that he has put in my heart. But I am mounting up with my children. I am mounting up with everything that is mine. Oh God. Come on, pray. Pray. You know the pain. I don't. You know the pain. Oh, Rashan Naralabo Sikatai. King of Kings, today we are digging wells for our children. God, we are calling them forth today, God. Uh, out of those addictions, our Father, out of crime and vices, we call them, oh God. As we pray that Jesus, you will remember them. We call them by name, oh God. We call them forth to salvation, oh Jehovah. Oh God, behold these ladies who are standing. Behold this man who is standing, our Father. And look upon them with mercy. Look upon them with mercy, God. And bring back their children. We know your mercy is saying no. Mercy is saying no today. In the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, we thank you. We thank you as we dig the well of faith for our children. As we remove all the mind of our God, we decree and declare that Lord, you are going to meet with them, our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I'd like those young people who'd like to give their lives to the Lord. As the parents are sitting, please, as you sit, you'll continue digging so that until those children come back to the Lord, we are not letting them go. You are out there. You're a young person. You've been struggling. You've been struggling with a behavior. You've been struggling with an addiction. And you're seated there. If you could just rise up on your feet. Don't care. Maybe you're telling yourself, what will people think of me? Let them think of whatever it is they want to think. It is time to come to the Lord in this dispensation. It is time to come to the King of Kings. So you can just rise if you have been struggling with a situation you've been struggling with something today the parents are digging out the dirt out of uh, yes thank you so much I can see you thank you so much thank you so so much any other young person I can see you in the balcony the Lord loves you so much he has not despised you he has not written you off he loves you so much any other who wants to join the rest who have stood in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you so so much Father in the mighty name of Jesus we bring these young people who are standing all over in the balcony my Father before you God only you knows what they are struggling with and we lift them to you as parents today we pray that God you are going to break the yoke of addiction you are going to break the yoke of slavery God and you are bringing them back into your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that God from today our Father, this marks a difference in their lives oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We bring them to you God. We bring them to you Jehovah in the mighty name of Jesus. As these young people are still standing, maybe you'll just repeat after me as you bring your lives to Christ today. And we'll help them even as we pray together. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I've realized that only you can help me walk the path of righteousness. 
And so I surrender my life to you. And I pray that you're going to hold my hand. You write my name in the book of life. And from today, my life belongs to you. I surrender it totally to you. Thank you for saving me. And thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and we bless you because of that which you've done in the lives of these young people and even those who are represented by the parents. Oh God, we thank you because we know you're transforming them and you're changing them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Those young people who stood, I don't know if there's an usher in the balcony. Ushers, ushers. Thank you. You can just pick their names so that... Um, We'll have them being helped to walk through this journey. And may the Lord bless you.